people, 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 uh, good morning, good morning, good morning, you know who it is, it's Arsenio Buck reporting live from Vietnam, I'm ecstatic people, I'm, uh, I'm finally here, I can't, I still can't pretty much stomach the fact that I'm in Vietnam, but I am excited to be here, and the great thing about Vietnam is, wow, after 40 years, <clears throat> after 40 years after the war, you still, I, I don't know, was I expecting to see GIs everywhere? No, you know, that's, no, of course not, but the fact that this is such an unbelievably beautiful city with genuine human beings after such a nasty war is just amazing. Um... Anyways, let's get let's get to the beginning. Now, let's go back to the beginning. Now, when I got onto the pl- uh got onto the plane out there in Bangkok, Air Asia, you guys are pathetic. Come on. This is terrible. Listen, first of all, I don't like flying in small planes, and I don't know why an international flight has such a small plane, although the, I know I understand that Vietnam's only an hour and a half away, but that is pathetic, Air Asia. Number 2, you had crumbs all over the floor. The carpet and the walkway was all ripped up. There was crumbs on the seats, and I had the most annoying, ignorant Vietnamese passenger sitting next to me. There were like a couple, but I don't know, probably a newlywed couple. I have no idea. But I, I had to start saying to myself, uh, Arsenio, relax. Don't do anything stupid. Don't cuss them out. Don't do that. Just talk to the flight attendant. Talk to the flight attendant. She walked down the, line, the aisle, and I said, listen. I need to leave or I'm going to fuck this guy up. <laughs> That's uh, It got really nasty. It escalated real fast, okay? Uh, but other than that, I walked uh, I walked to the back towards uh, some Russians in the back and wonder, oh, just tall, tan skin, blonde, blue eyed, just beautiful women. But I sat there instead. And honestly, this descending was like the worst descending of all time. Because, uh, well, we were just kind of being brushed in the wind. That really, really pissed me off. Because when you're in a smaller aircraft, like, for instance, when I took Singapore Airlines uh, to Bangkok, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. The A380 is a monster. I didn't feel any turbulence whatsoever. But when you take a smaller aircraft, a smaller aircraft, it is subjected to being thrown in the goddamn wind. So here we are, tossing and turning. See, black people, we don't even know, we don't even like to fly, okay? Well, I mean, if we fly Singapore Airlines, okay, that's better. But, uh, or Emirates, or Qatar, or just a a monster piece of aircraft. But flying in these passenger planes, like I did Hawaiian Airlines one time, that was the biggest disaster of my lifetime. Because when they're descending, it's like, it's just like, you're in a, you're going 400 miles per hour. Man, I, it's like you're going 400 miles per hour in a goddamn car. Everything is shaking. It's like every – oh, I don't even know how to explain it. It's kind of like using the afterburners in a jet, okay? You're holding on for your goddamn dear life. And, of course, everyone else is fine. But, man, I'm over here just freaking out like, oh, shit, oh, shit. And this guy, he did like a full 360 turn. So we're literally – and listen, there are no clouds in the sky. Can you imagine if there were clouds in the sky? This would be the worst pl- plane ride ever. So Air, Air Asia, you can kiss my black ass. I am not going to invest into your sorry ass international flights anymore. Honestly, Thailand Air is by far the number one airline in Thailand just because their service is far more th- uh, far more superior than disgusting Thai Airways. And Nok Air is an absolute <clears> – <throat> it's a travesty too. But Thailand Air from now on, why? Because they have Boeings. Those Boeings, they can break through anything. If we're doing just an easy calm turn, a left-hand turn, there's no wind, guys. There was no wind in Ho Chi Minh yesterday. Can you imagine if there was just a little bit of wind and some clouds? I remember we went through probably clouds for about probably about 7.3 seconds. Goddamn plane, it sounded like it was going to just come apart. Pathetic. I'm not go- – I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Air Asia, you have lost. You have lost. All your goddamn marbles. Anyways, other than the annoying passengers and almost being th- being thrown out of my seat because of uh, what, taking a, a terrible – what is that? An Airbus 320. They ain't, go, ain't no goddamn Airbus, okay? 320s, that's not an Airbus. The A380, the one that Singapore has in their fleet, that's a metropolis in the sky. But not no goddamn 320. They should just not – they shouldn't even call it an Airbus. They should just call it Passenger Jet 320. 
come in your own risk or come at your own risk. I don't give a goddamn. Anyways, we landed and I'm like, okay, I'm in Ho Chi Minh. I got a lot of things going through my mind as far as currency. Who's going to meet me at the airport? One of my friends are going to meet me, yada, yada, yada. And so I ended up getting, got my landing visa, customs, unbelievable, wonderful. No problems whatsoever. Smile, everything. I'm telling you, man, there's just something very, very wrong about Thailand. I don't know why they're just so goddamn angry out there. <laughs> I really don't. But anyways, uh, after I got my landing visa, got some currency, my friend met me. We took a taxi into town, and I was just in awe to see how big, beautiful, big, and just how in control Saigon is. Now, of course, yes, the traffic, there's a lot of motorbikes and stuff like that, but I'm talking about... I'm talking about like the city in general. It's not just all run down pieces, shit, garbage like Thailand. Like Thailand, you could go into the heart, like Sion, Paragon, MBK, and all those places. But just a couple of clicks away, it's just a disgusting whoreville, or it's dis- like literally whoreville. There's just hookers everywhere, or there's it just smells like sewage everywhere. They don't even know how to. I don't know, but Vietnam, they just do it well. And we're talking about a country that's just been 40 years after one of the most nastiest wars. And after the Viet Congs just rolled right into Saigon and just took over. It's just amazing. Anyways, Circle K, baby. If you guys don't know about Circle K in England or Australia, uh, Circle K is one of the oldest mini-marts. I don't even know if they have them out there in Las Vegas anymore. But I remember seeing them 15 years ago when I was in seventh grade. Uh, they have a Circle K here, and I was like, oh my god, do they have American stuff? Nah, it's the same as Thailand, so it's all good, but I just love the fact how personable some of these, uh, the v- Vietnamese are. Like, I mean, we went to a restaurant last night. Now, that's one thing I have to talk about, too, the food, boy. Yeah, it ain't cut for me. Like, in Thailand, that's probably the one and only thing I'm going to give them is the food, because the food out there is wonderful. Uh, well, at least I could eat that, but the thing is, I cannot eat Vietnamese food. Well, maybe it was just the soup that I was eating yesterday, and it was just, the noodles had a different taste, and the soup had a different texture, and it was just like, wow, this is an interesting combination they put together here. Kind of difficult, but hey, in the end, it's an experience, and I'm thankful for it, and I'm grateful for it. Uh, I ate a pepper like an idiot, and there was no sense of urgency out of the people. They didn't even have water at the restaurant. They came back like... Probably a minute and a half. I could have died if they weren't just so resp- – they, they were just so unresponsive. I was like, you guys stink. Uh, but yeah, man. What I need to do today – that was last night. I decided that I didn't want to go out or anything. Um, and then woke up this morning. We got a, got a few things to do. I got a few people to meet and stuff like that too. So, man, I – am ecstatic to be here and viet i'm telling you what right when i checked in this hotel legit now i'm not picky whatsoever you know when you walk into a hotel number one thing i always look for is how well the people respond you know how customer service that's number one like i said i could go to a country that's absolutely just desolate you know desolated Right, but if they have quality customer service or just quality people, I'll choose them any day over Thailand. Because Thailand, one thing, I mean, is it even as clean as Vietnam? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And the thing is, the Vietnamese people are so far more ahead of Thai people in terms of accepting people. It's not. A, I remember I walked outside my hotel, and there's this guy just sitting down. He looked at me, and he had just like a a, a face of contentment. He was just, like, satisfied. I was like, that's cool, man, you know? And I remember I was walking, and I walked past this coffee shop. This girl kept looking at me. Didn't really make anything of it because she was across the street. But I'm looking at everyone. And the thing is, man, everywhere I go, I don't exist, you know? It's just people just mind their own business. It's not like Thai people who, like, literally have to just stare at you or jump out of the way or they're fucking ignorant, you know, you know, it's just crazy because in Thailand, I could be walking, and right after I'm done walking, uh, well, not done walking, but while I'm walking, somebody would see me and literally jump out of the way and say something. That's how ignorant Thai people are, straight up. You know, they're just, they have not 
gone out and they think their country is unbelievable, but it's on the verge of I'm not even going to get into those details because this is my vacation. I don't give a fuck about Thailand. Anyways, but Vietnamese people, I already knew that they were far more better than uh than Thai folks. And of course, within four hours of uh being in Vietnam, I pretty much just proved that right off the back. You know, so I'm like, you know what? Thank you. And it's funny because a couple people looked at me and I don't know. I think they they think they I think they think I'm Eddie Murphy. I don't know, man, because they look at me and then they they kind of smile and then they talk to their friends and then, and then they start pointing. And I think I think it's something about like they probably think I'm a star. I don't know. But anyways, man, I am happy. And, you know, it's great because right outside my hotel, there are these monster towering trees like being in Long Beach, California, or like being anywhere in uh, Southern California where you got these palm trees that are so massively high. And so right outside my hotel, if you guys want to see pictures, go on, uh, check me out at at AJ in Thailand, okay? At AJ in Thailand is my Twitter uh, you can check some of those pictures out, uh, pictures, yeah, check some of them out, check some of them out, what the hell, yeah, check some of them out, and these trees are just beautiful, and they're just like, they're right on the side of the road, and then you got all this traffic going by and stuff like that, and, oh, it's just such a beautiful corridor, I gotta take a picture today, like, right in the middle of the street, I'm gonna snap, I'm gonna snap one. But, uh, yeah, like I said, the motorbike and the traffic, I mean, people say traffic jam is pretty bad, but the thing is, the traffic jam involves motorbikes, mopeds, right? They don't involve cars. When they involve cars, this is, it's just a, I mean, it's just a standstill. It's a goddamn gridlock. But with motorbikes, it keeps easing, 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 easing. So, I mean, people think the traffic is really bad, but not necessarily. Pollution, uh, not necessarily, because they don't have Sontails. Sontails, like a little carriage, uh. I wouldn't say a carriage, but just imagine a pickup truck with a little thing in the back where people could sit. Now, with those trucks and with these old ass buses in Thailand and with some of the, uh, just all buses in general, they blow out some of the most disgusting black smog. I remember I was, well, yesterday, just yesterday, I was running down the goddamn corridor, well, not down the goddamn corridor, down the street, and I swear, this blood, this nasty bus, I was gonna flip him off if I had the opportunity, I just didn't know that he was blowing that type of smoke out of his goddamn bus, black, black, disgusting smoke, so the pollution in Thailand is definitely, comes out of the, these nasty, janky-ass cars that the government obviously doesn't want to replace, uh, but, but, the thing is, when we were coming into Vietnam, man, man, that was some ugly ass pollution. Uh, was it worse than Thailand? I think so, a little bit. Flying in, yes, but when we actually got to the ground level, I could see blue skies and stuff, man. So it's like, uh, is it actually, you know, I don't know, I don't know. But with that being said, people, I am supposed to be recording this Jack Canfield theme. But I need to get my my morning going. It's like six forty five right now. Uh, didn't get good much, uh, didn't get, I didn't get much sleep last night, I don't know why, but, obviously, because I'm excited, but, today, let's see where today takes me, man, so, guys, stay tuned for another episode, uh, real soon, alright, with that being said, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening, this is your boy, Arsenio, over and out.